So now we're going to get in. There's two types of ripping, well, actually three. One will be freehand, which we're going to do now. Then we do a type of ripping where we use a fence. And then we'll actually be building a jigsaw cutting station that will be able to rip and cross cut. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to, this is our 14 inch piece, right? Now you've already cut some off of this that you use for the wand. Uh, so we want this next piece to be one and a quarter inches. So I'm going to mark one and a quarter inches right there. Okay, and I'm going to show you something that your, your, your square, your speed square has on it. Okay, so it has a lot. This, this actually does a lot. You can figure angles and all kinds of stuff with this. And I'll show you how to do all that as we go. But see these little divots right here? These little dents. So if I put this on my piece of wood like this and I move this up, that line right there, one and a quarter, lines up exactly with that divot. So I know that divot is. So um, let me plant my piece of wood here. So that divot, right, right here, that one is one and a quarter, so exactly with my line. So if I put my pin right there in that divot, it'll kind of hold it. And now I hold the square next to the side of the wood, and I just drag it down. And I can make a perfectly straight line all the way down. Okay? So that's a feature you have on this, right? The other thing, obviously, you can do is make your one and a quarter line here, make your one and a quarter line here, and then take your ruler. Sometimes you have to make three of them if it's longer than your ruler is, right? Um, can't see my mark. And a quarter. And then just connect dots. So that's definitely a way. Um, you can actually practice both of them if you want to. So now to freehand rip this, what we're going to do is we're going to first clamp our wood. But with part of it hanging over like this, right? So this is hanging out here. So this part I can cut without a problem. In fact, I can ease that out further. It all depends on the clamp. So I can actually do this where I have most of it out here. So now I can freehand cut right up that line with my saw. So one thing I want to cover real quick about your saw is, see this blade, see how fine the teeth are, and then see this blade. Um, I don't know if you can get them to focus, but see the difference? See this one has a lot more teeth per inch. It's really fine tooth. This one is much more aggressive. Right on the verge of too aggressive actually, but it's a new sharp blade. Uh, and this is an old dull blade. So you need to have your mom check and make sure that your saw blade is straight and that it's sharp, and that it's pretty new, it have a bunch of rust and everything all on it. Uh, and if not, she can show you how to change the blade or change the blade. Uh, this one uh, just has one screw right here. I loosen, slide the blade in, and tighten the screw up. Uh, some don't even have to do that. They just slide in and out. So depending on what type of saw you have, it will it'll do different stuff. Okay, so we're going to start ripping this. I've got this clamped down. And I'm going to put my saw blade just on, remember, the outside of the line. The outside means the part that I'm not going to keep. This is the part I'm going to keep here. And I want to just touch the line uh, on the way in. And I kind of want to adjust my saw so that the line's in the middle here. So I'm set up pretty straight because I don't have my square now, right? I don't really have anything to go off of. So this is why it's called freehand. And now... You got to get where you can try and see, right? Um, 
And now I'm just touching the line exactly like I want to be. Now this saw is designed to cut curves, so it, it's actually harder to cut a straight line with this saw than a crooked line, because it's designed to cut crooked lines. We're using it for something different. So you've got to, you've got to be very careful to keep it on. If it starts getting off, back up, put a little pressure, not a lot, a little pressure. You don't want to bend your saw blade. You can put your thumb on the side of the base like this to kind of put now won't put your finger under here, that's where the saw that's where the blade is. Um, I'm doing my right hand, that's wrong, because I that's not it used to be over here where I've got the waist side. But I use my thumb to kind of hold it. Also I'm pushing down on the wood a little bit. See the wood can rock because I have leverage on the clamp. So I'm using the leverage uh, to clamp it tighter not let it loosen up, so I'm pushing down a little bit. See, I'm getting off my line just a little bit to the left. You see I'm turning the saw a little bit to get back. The saw is designed to be able to turn. Not really, really sharp, you'll twist the blade, but you can turn kind of gradual, okay? Get back on the Don't push the saw too fast. If the saw hits a hard spatch of wood and it slows down, that's okay. Just slow down. You want to give it some pressure. You probably want to give it, um, like when you're tying your shoe tight, uh, probably, you know, five pounds of pressure. Enough that it doesn't kick back. It slowly moves forward. You always want to keep it moving forward. If you find it getting pushed back, you're not giving it enough pressure. See, my cap is a little bit loose here because I'm pressing down on it. I'm causing it to do that, so I'll re-tighten it. It's okay. saw bogging down. Okay, that's me pressing a little too hard. Okay, you have to listen for it. Man, this is really tough wood. I think my saw teeth are getting all clogged up. This wood's kind of wet too, which is really making it harder. Wet wood is harder to cut uh, than other wood is. But we're doing it. See, it's a nice straight line. Uh, oh, see that knot right there? That's what it is. Knots are really hard. They're super hard. That's where another tree limb is growing out of this limb. And so that's what's really causing us a lot of difficulty. It's, uh, they also have a lot more sap in them, so they're gummier. So they're definitely harder to get through. When we're done with this, we may take alcohol and clean our blade up. Okay, well, I'm going to cut the video off and go back to doing this. Uh, it's a lot of video for you to have to watch. Because it's kind of a hard spot here and I have a hard time to get through, I actually put two clamps on to help hold it. I have four clamps. I can put more clamps. I can come in here and put another clamp on. And sometimes it takes a bunch of different clamps to hold it uh, in place. Another thing is sometimes when you're moving in and out of a place you already cut, like I want to take it out a while ago, I can lift it out and that comes out okay. But sometimes getting it back in is really tough. So you can kind of move it uh, or you can just turn it on. <laughs> and the blade will move right up really fast um, until you get to where you want to be and then you can stop and get set up and get ready to go. Okay, so now I've cut back here and I'm almost to my saw, uh, my table, edge table, my clamps and stuff. So now I'm gonna undo everything. And now I'm gonna turn it the other way. See, and now my saw it's cut to here, but not out here. So now I can clamp it like this so that I don't have, when I cut all the way through, I still won't beat on my table. It's clear. So now I can start reclamping it again.
and now I will be able to cut, uh, should be able to, this clamp may get in the way, but I can be able to cut almost all the way through or all the way through now without uh, hitting anything. And then I will complete my freehand rip. It's called a rip when you cut the wood long ways. And now I had to pull the last little bit apart so I didn't get perfectly in line right here, right? That's the thing about when you go from one end to the other. Where they meet may not be exactly perfect. Uh, but that's okay on this one because this is going to be our handle, remember? So we're going to end up doing all kinds of stuff to this anyway. So it's okay in this one. Uh, what's really important though is that it's really, it, it one end or the other is really square. And in this case, both ends are really square. It's only the right in the middle where they came together and where that big knot made it really difficult. It's off a little. But that's okay. We'll fix all that. Um, this part here is going to go in the head of our uh, mallet, so that's why it needs to be square. And this one looks better, I think, so we're not using this one. Okay, that's how you freehand rip. And that's what you will need to do for the mallet handle. Uh, next, we will work with, uh, we're going to be, after we finish the mallet and uh, work on the wand for a bit, uh, our next project, once we're done with all that, is we will build the jigsaw cutting station that I was telling you about. So we can cut a lot more wood with the jigsaw and cut it straight uh, and cut it accurately. Okay? All right, huh? Love you. Talk to you later.